Chaps and chapesses, welcome to another video. I'm out for another try on the wee local river. I've actually been out two or three times since I published the last video, but didn't record any of it. Truth is, there are just so many videos you could shoot in the same place before it all gets a bit predictable and samey. Unless you can come up with some interesting new ideas or have something specific to say or do, people can quickly get bored with it all. The things have changed a bit over the last few weeks. The weather's improved a wee bit and the fish have woken up. I've got plenty of fish over the last few outings but the average size has been pretty small. No more two and a half pounders I'm afraid. Lots of seven or eight inch fish and loads of salmon and sea trout smolts. Great to see them but not something you really want to be catching if you can avoid it. So anyway, if you're a regular viewer you might recognise the stretch I'm on. If not, it's been chosen because it's relatively easy going for an old codger like me. Lower down the river, it's real machete country that has me wheezing and groaning in a general state of collapse in no time flat. Right yo, I'll switch it off now and see you again once I reach the river bank. Okay, before I start fishing, I'll sit here for a few minutes, watch the water and talk a wee bit about ads on this channel. As you may know, YouTube creators can earn a bit of ad revenue from ads that appear in their videos. The channel has no control over what ads appear, so we'll have to hope that what pops up is appropriate and at least related to the content in some way. There are all kinds of eligibility criteria that apply before a channel can be monetized, as they call it. For example, you need to have at least a thousand subscribers and so many thousands of hours of watch time over a running 12 month period. When I started this channel, none of this was at all relevant as I had no intention of allowing ads and earning money from it, so I just ignored it all. However, last year or the year before, YouTube changed its terms and conditions in a way that allowed them to show ads on your videos whether you liked it or not. Only difference was they kept all the cash and you get sawed all. Now I've got no beef with YouTube, they're a business that provides this amazing platform essentially free of charge. And they say, in reality, there is no such thing as a free lunch. How true is that? So this is why we have the ads. There is no way to avoid them now. And at least this way I can recover a tiny amount of the Hollywood blockbuster budget it takes to produce these A-list classics. So anyway, hopefully that clears that up. Let's go fishing. Right, we'll have a few casts in here to start with. Fish up this run quite quickly and then move on upstream a wee bit. No sign of anything rising at the moment. No flies hatching. It's actually quite chilly. The car thermometer was saying 13 degrees. That air's still coming off the North Sea and it's still a bit chilly. time is it? 10 past 11. It's probably early enough in the day yet. I've got a real problem seeing the flies in the glare. Oh did I mention I'm fishing dry fly? I've got two dries on. Small size 16 grizzly spider and 
size 12 I think it is, elk here carries. Really, he just uses a marker. But there's no sign of any fish rising. There might have been better fishing with the nymphs, but we'll start with the dries anyway. <coughs> the other day when I was down, it was actually further downstream. Fish rising everywhere, but as I previously said, we're really all on this pretty small side. Made, I've just seen a fish nosing the surface up there. Let's take a few steps further up. But then again, I may have just been imagining it. Fishing with the old faithful combination today. A Sage ZXL 4 weight and a Scientific Angler's Mastery line. It is an absolutely fabulous combination. Didn't bring the fiberglass rod today. I, I like using a different rod every time I come out of a can. Each one's just got a different feel. Not absolutely nothing rising in this pool at all, which is a bit of a surprise. I think the fish must still be all in bed. Right, I'll try a bit further upstream and fish this pool again on the way back down again. A few more casts and then I'll move. My goodness, the gorse really is at its glorious best at the moment. Fabulous, just sensational. I should maybe talk a bit about the title of this video. I've just decided to call it Bandy Catching Blues, in part to match the title music and also because I catch mainly bandies here. So what the heck is a bandy I hear you cry? I think I may have covered this in one of my very early videos but no harm in doing so again. Bandy is a real northeast of Scotland term for any small fish. In fact, I don't think I've ever heard it outside the Arbroath area. I think it originally described a minnow. Minnows have a long lateral stripe or band. So a bandy is a small minnow, but the word has become an almost derogatory term for any small fish caught by an angler. As in, he only catches bandies. It's got the stage you now when even a small god's called a bandy. Anyway, I hope that clears it up. In the UK, every region seems to have its own evocative and descriptive words. Right, we'll be going here with the dry. I must admit, I'm sorely tempted to swap over to the nymph because the water is just totally dead. I'll fish this pool anyway with the dry and then decide what I'm going to do. The flow rate of the river is really dropping off fast. I just hope we get some rain soon because this, this is going to be dead low quite shortly. Once the farmers start irrigating, that's going to make it a thousand times worse. But it's really noticeably dropped off. The rate of flow in the last week has just gone right down. Oh! Rose one there and missed it. We didn't miss it, I felt it, but I didn't hook it. I suppose that means I missed it. <laughs> I don't think it was very big, but at least that's the first encouraging sign of something happening. I might still just swap over the nymph for a while anyway. Oh, there we go. <laughs> A real tiddler. This is the size I've been catching in the last few outings, unfortunately. That's tough. Let's see if he's handling it. 
That thing must have been about six or seven inches long. And another one. And it's off as well. That was another tiddler. Right, I'm going to switch it off for a minute and put a nymph in the rig on and I'll go with that. I can always swap back the dries again. Oh my goodness me, did you see the size of that thing? It launched itself out of the water. Almost took my fly before it hit the water. It's a real sprat. It's a few rising but now that they're really, really small. Okay, no mess. Let's go into the nymph. See you shortly. Right, that's the nymph zone. I think I'm going to have to get a, a bit of a bit of stream with a bit more flow in it, though. Plus, I've probably already spooked everything in here. But I'll have a few casts anyway. Yeah, there's actually no flow in here at all. Okay, I'll try upstream a bit. Now this is where I got my big fish last time. But the flow, oh, it's, it's, it's just dropped off completely. This was, it was probably about six inches to a foot higher. It's really dropped off a lot. There's not really sufficient flow in here to fish nymphs this way. So I'm going to go around the corner, have a go there. Some nice streamy water is in here. Oh, the river's just dead. Oh, go. A fish at last. Not a very big one. The toy bee thing. And that was taken on an olive pogo nymph. What's that about? Seven inches. Back you go. But at least it's a fish. That was in the much faster water. So another one just came to me there, but I didn't feel it. It splashed at the pogo nymph. Sometimes when it's slow like this, you'd be better just to fish through the pools really quickly. My goodness, this really is quite low now. We're now at summer levels. Right, I'll go straight for the streamier water here. No, not a touch. So we touch there. A real sprat. Actually saw the fish. <laughs> A wee tiddler. Right, we'll try up a wee bit more. Well the sand martins are very active today. Many birds are on there. Two dozen maybe. I see we've been excavating new holes. Excellent. They certainly won't be hoping for high water anyway. <laughs> Last year they got washed out and they were probably they had eggs or chicks. Towards the end of May we had a a winter event type 
load. Which certainly helped preserve the fishing for most of the season, but it didn't do much for the birds. My goodness, we have really noticed how much the flow's dropped in this corner pool here. It's remarkable. In just in a week, how much the river has dropped. Incredible. The last time I was out, I had to abandon fishing in this pool. I just lost one there. I had to abandon fishing in this pool because it was getting a smoke every cast. It's a shame that one came off. Another offer. Fish are right up in the fast water. Try this faster water up here. A wee smolt. It is a salmon smolt. Yeah, that's a salmon smolt. Up you go, salmon. Come back when you're about 15 pounds. Alright, I'm going to head back downstream, fish some of the spots that I haven't fished for a while. Because up here, my all my, my favourite places. They're getting a bit thin to be honest with you. There's not really enough flow for successful nymph fishing. And not a lot of rising. We're really going to have to get some rain soon. Right, well, one of the nymphs through this fast water up here. Fish took the indicator there. Let's <laughs> get into the bottom, unfortunately. Bit of a job getting a cast in here. You can see the odd fish rising. It's warming up a bit, I'll maybe go back to the dries again. No, I'm just getting snagged. Not enough flow. Right, we'll try downstream a bit. Right, we'll have a go in here. This is where I started earlier on with a dry fly and didn't get a touch. It's normally a good, a good spot, this. I just saw a fish rising away up the, up the run there, up, upside the rapids. I'm just getting snagged up in the bottom too much. And the nymph I've got on, the heavy nymph isn't even particularly heavy, heavy it's a one or a one and a half millimetre bead. There's a fish there rising continuously and it's just taking the mickey. <laughs> no, they're just not interested in these nymphs, I think I'm going to shift back onto the dry fly again. 
yeah, that's what I'll do. Right, that's me back on the drives again. Unfortunately, I probably put everything down in this pool. <laughs> Can't win. Okay, I'll try a fresh spot further down. Now, I don't normally fish this spot because it's a leg-breaking experience getting down to the water here. It's so dangerous. However, I managed to find a way and I've just rose a fish which I missed because I'm too busy blaring. Yeah, I want us to find a way down. So let's give it a go. It's years since I fished this spot. Whoa! Fish slashed at it again. I think that was the same fish as the last time. Slashing at the elk here, Caris but not actually taking it. Or maybe it's just I'm too slow. Fish nimble at the fly there again without actually taking it. There are absolutely massive shoals and minnows in this pool. Thousands of them at my feet at the moment. Another one slashed at it. I think the fish are too small to get that fly in their mouth. <laughs> Try further down again. Right, we'll be going here. It's another spot I haven't fished for a while. I notice a couple of small ones rising. It's quite difficult to fish this, we've got trees all around. One of these days, I'm afraid, losing fish and missing fish, <laughs> you get them. The pool's about to be scuppered because I'm kicking up a load of silt, which is caught in a back area and it's heading upstream. I don't know if that health care carries is maybe just a bit in the big side, but I'm getting loads of rises to it, but I'm not even feeling the fish, it's like they're coming up and slashing at it, trying to drown it or something. I don't know. They're not very big anyway. Well, this looks like a nice spot of a few. I'll fish up right at the top of this run and then probably just call it a day. It's hardly been a red letter out in <laughs> really strange. Everything just looks like it's fine. Just everything should have fallen into place today, but no. We're well, not much in the way of flies hatching. And the fish I did connect were well, lost pretty much all of them. Not that they were worth landing, I think maybe the, big, the biggest one is maybe about eight or nine inches. Just noticed the fish rising right in the tongue of that rapid up there. So we'll fish up towards it. Oh, there's, there's one there. Just another wee one though, but this just seems to be the stamp of the fish I'm catching here at the moment. I've gone for two and a half pounds to two and a half ounce. That's our boy. But hey, it's a fish. It's a fish. I 
I think I'm going to have to rename this video from Bandy Catching Blues to Bandy Blanking Blues. And another one. Whoa, that's a better one. Still nothing to write home about, but a heck of a lot better than what I've been getting. Six ounces, maybe stunning condition. Back you go. I think that fish was probably the one I saw rising to further down. Flies aren't floating very well. Better to do a bit of TLC on them. Okay, there's a couple more places I'm going to try before I park up that. Getting that massive six ounce has given me some encouragement. So I'll go down below the road bridge here. And there's a couple of runs and pools I can fish there. I just missed another one, another sprat. And probably call it a day after that. Right, I'll have a wee shot in here, then a shot in the run below the bridge, and that'll probably do this. So here's hoping we can pick someone up here. I don't see anything rising or anything hatching, sadly. Lovely pool. Some cracking fish out in the past, but not for a couple of years. Oh, another slosh and rise at the Elk Care Caris, but no connection. There's a very good chance I'm going to cast right into this tree here. Right, go up to the bridge of a wee shot there and then call it a day. It's just not happening. Okay, last shot. A few fish rising here in the rough water. Whether they'll be any more interested. And the others further down and for the maze to be seen. There we go. Saw that one rising, so that, that was a quite a satisfying fish, not very big. And the trees above me, for heaven's sake. Right, and on the elk here, Caddis. Yeah, not very big, but it's a fish. A few more casts. That back eddy over there usually holds a fish. If you can get a drag free drift in it. Oh! Who's one? And another one. And it's off. But it wasn't big again. Saw that one rise. Another one just rose in there. I wonder if we can get it as well.
Well guys, I think I'm just going to call it a day at that. Hasn't been the most productive day, not the best day's fishing I've ever had, but a wonderful day to be out and about nonetheless. It certainly beats the hell out of sitting in the house during the winter anyway. <laughs> we must always remember that when the fishing isn't going <coughs> entirely to plan, it could be worse, it could be winter. So, we'll close at that. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next one, whenever that may be. Well, we've got to try and go somewhere else for a change. But it's getting a bit samey coming to the as lovely as this river is. It's getting a bit samey coming to the same place all the time. So let's see how it goes. And as I said, thanks for watching. And we'll close there. Bye for now.